uh, one of those choices seems to have disappeared, which is that I don't hear too many people anymore talking about um, a merger with Pakistan. So I think you could argue that uh, it would be the Azadi option, or if some people choose to work out some kind of arrangement within the Indian Union, it's possible. It's very difficult to say. No, so I think, um, you know, when I went to, to, in 2003 to Kashmir, um, one of the things that I was very struck by was how little about what was going on we knew. Uh, as I said before the film started, I, I was going back after 14 years. And um, I say this all the time, you know, I'm somebody who thinks I'm interested in the world. I read at least two newspapers every day. I watch. So I used to watch television in 2003, uh, now I've given up. Um, uh, and yet when I went to Kashmir, I was just horrified by how little I knew. And that was kind of, I think, a good barometer of how it was for most Indians. Um, I began, I shot the film, as I said, between 2004 and 2006. And when we were finishing the film, it's a long film, uh, you know, you've seen some parts of it. Uh, my editor and I, who very closely worked on the film, were, um, you know, obviously it, it's a contentious issue and how do you deal with it and uh, so on. So ultimately we just decided that it was impossible to please everybody and so we should make a film that at least pleased us, you know, that we said what we wanted to say. And we were pretty much convinced that we would get, um, you know, um, pillory in India, that we would be everybody would be mad at us for the film. But we said, it's all right, you know, once in your life you have to do something which you really want to do. But I was actually quite taken aback at the, uh, I won't say that it was welcomed, I don't say that everybody who saw the film liked it or agreed with it, but certainly there was a lot of curiosity. And um, I have, I mean, I've been making films for 20 years and I don't think there's any film I've shown as much as this one. Um, and it's a, like I said, it's a long film, it's an awkward film, and, and yet, I, and I'm not talking about metropolitan India. You know, I, I've personally shown this film in, you know, in, in smaller towns in India, Gorakhpur, Bareilly, Nanital, well, Patna is not a small town, but you know, so, um, so in a sense, audiences who traditionally don't watch documentaries, uh, so it was really, it was a curiosity about Kashmir. So I won't say that I, I, I won't say that the discourse on Kashmir has shifted, but I would say that uh, there is suddenly a, a huge question mark. People really know that something wrong is going on there. They don't know what is that, um, but they know something, uh, something not quite, uh, something rotten in the state of Denmark. <laughs> Yeah, this is unfortunate, but actually that's a part that those of us who are on the Indian side know very little about. Um, um, in a sense, uh, the people there, um, it's, it's as militarized, uh, the sort of uh, the structures of democratic governance are probably uh, as uh, beaten down there as they are on this side. But it is true that they are not regarded as a, as a hostage population in the same way that on the Indian side, you know. So um, it, I, I don't really, I'm not in a position to, uh, to speak much about it, but I'm not, I think that I don't think things are um, that much better for people on the other side. Of course, there's not a war on there. On this side, it's a full-fledged rebellion. You know, it's, 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 it's an insurrection. There's no insurrection on that side. But Things are not rosy on that side either. Please. Yeah. So it's it's my sense, but please confirm it or, or you know, modify it that that uh, the Kashmir, Kashmiri identity and the language is largely rooted in, in in the valley. So my question is, what about the um, Muslims of the state of Kashmir from Zaska and you know Jammu and yeah. the other uh, the other districts? How close? do they feel culturally, linguistically, yeah. to the, the value of others? Yeah. Um, that's an important question and a difficult one. 
Um, but see, one of the things is that in the popular discourse in India, and particularly the discourse that the state promotes, uh, this, uh, the, the reinforcing of this idea is a very important part of that, which is to say, oh, there is a Muslim Kashmir, there's a Hindu Jammu and a Buddhist Ladakh. And actually there are three parts and only one part wants Azadi and other two don't. Now this is not quite accurate. For example, if you take Ladakh, I mean, half of Ladakh is, is Muslim. You know, it's Shia Muslim, but it's Muslim. If you look at Jammu, uh, other than the city of Jammu, you know, the uh, areas like what, are, what comes within Jammu province, Doda, Kishtwar, you know, areas like that, they are um, either Muslim majority or 50-50. So uh, if you were to look at it strictly in sort of religious terms, um, the picture is a little more complicated. Uh, it is true that traditionally there hasn't exactly been a kind of a very close relationship between the Muslims of the valley and those in, in, in these other Muslim uh, populations in these other parts, has, has there has not been a very, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a, uh, there isn't a relationship. And um, if you look at just the, you see, one of the things we have to remember is that militarization is a very odd thing. I mean, there is probably much more army now in Rajori and Doda than there is in the valley you know, or as much. And militarization will turn perfectly apolitical people into uh, pro-Azadi, uh, you know, sort of supporters. So the difficulty is that it's except it's only in the valley that people fight to be heard. You don't know what the hell is going on in the other parts because they are military cantonments, and military cantonments are not good places in which to find out what people are thinking. You know. So it's actually. Um, it's very difficult to assess how people will, if they are given a choice, what choice will they make. Right now it's very difficult to, make, to, to come to any kind of assessment. So you really have to take people's word for it. The state will say, no, they're not interested. It's just the valley Muslims who are uh, up in arms. Um, people I speak to will say, no, they're completely on the side of the movement. But difficult to say. Difficult to say, but in terms of the militancy, you know, uh, there is support coming from, not from uh, Kargil, but certainly in the militant ranks, there are people from Doda, Kishtwar, uh, Rajori. So, please. Uh, I have two questions. They're not really related, but the first question was about, um, like recently, I'm thinking of what's happening in the Middle East. Uh, we see a lot of youth involved, a lot of women too, which is very different from the perception of the Middle East. And something similar we've been seeing in Kashmir over the past three years, the presence of youth, you wrote an article about the women. Um, and it's somewhat related in the sense that you see the Arab youth post 9-11, which I myself have seen in the US, how it's become more politicized and more bold in terms of making statements. And similarly, the youth we see in Kashmir is probably, you know, people who grew up in that very militant yeah. uh, time. And it seems like they're more evolved in terms of their political understanding. So I wanted uh, you to yeah. talk about that. And then the different question is completely different, which is like in context of overall India or South Asia, what we were talking about earlier, the, like, the perception of India is about a democracy in South Asia, uh, Pakistan is known as, you know, controlled by the military, just like Egypt is known, it's well known. About India, it's not yeah. known because India is considered a democracy, but there's a huge military police presence, not just in Kashmir, all of East, Central, Belt, it's different forms of, you know, uh, yeah. forces. 